The internal combustion engine has been around for over a hundred years. It powers many forms of transportation, including automobiles, motorcycles, trains, and small airplanes. Most kinds of internal combustion engines use a reciprocating piston cylinder design. However, they can be relatively big for the power they put out, and certain designs can introduce vibration and imbalance into the system, creating slow, uncomfortable rides. Wankel engines, on the other hand, can be perfectly balanced using an even number of rotors and can make typically twice the horsepower per liter of displacement than their piston cylinder counterparts. The History of the Wankel Engine In 1924, Felix Wankel began creating sketches of rotary-style piston engines. He did not have much initial luck, so he left the project to focus on school and his machine shop. In 1926, while working as a consultant on a high-pressure lubrication apparatus, he focused on the idea of sealing the gaps between two surfaces in direct contact. This would provide him with the inspiration to go back to the idea of a rotary engine to improve the sealing of pistons. His ideal engine required ideal sealing between the rotor and the engine wall, so he spent the next seven years researching and designing these seals. Finally, in 1936, Felix's contract with BMW led to a series of patents, including the first rotary engine. This engine used concentric rotation, where the rotating assembly and the output shaft share the same axis of rotation. Later on, in 1951, automobile company NSU further developed this design, resulting in the rotary engine that we know today. This design used eccentric rotation, where the rotating assembly axis of rotation is offset from the output shaft. The Wankel engine works on the same thermodynamic auto cycle that reciprocating piston engines use – intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. It is relatively simple to follow the thermodynamic processes of this cycle using the PV and TS diagrams. During intake, air is brought into the chamber, starting the cycle at state 1. This air is actually an air-fuel mixture, which is combustible upon ignition. During compression, the diagrams go from states 1 to 2, decreasing in volume and increasing in pressure, therefore ideally changing temperature but not entropy. This compression adds power to the combustion of the gas. Combustion occurs going from states 2 to 3. The spark plug ignites the mixture, resulting in an explosion in the combustion chamber, pushing the rotor towards the exhaust port. The following expansion and movement of the rotor is state 3 to 4, relieving pressure built up from combustion. This is an isochoric process, as the entropy in the exhaust system matches the entropy in the engine. Exhaust and intake both constitute process 4 to 1, therefore repeating the cycle. However, instead of taking two crankshaft revolutions to complete the cycle, the rotary engine completes the cycle on every revolution of the engine. In fact, in the modern three-lobe rotor-powered engine, three of the cycle's processes are happening at the same time, each for different lobes. This is why rotary engines sound so different from the typical piston cylinder car engine. The advantages and disadvantages of the Wankel engine. An upside to the rotary engine is that it is half the size and weight of the regular piston engine but with the similar output. Also, in a rotary engine, there is less than half the moving parts than in the corresponding piston cylinder engine. For example, in a Chevrolet V8, there are 388 moving parts. In a rotary engine from the same time period with similar output, there are only 154 moving parts. This simplicity 
and lack of rotating mass means that rotary engines can turn at high revolutions per minute. This means that rotary engines are well suited to the racing industry. Some disadvantages for the rotary engine. They get inferior gas mileage compared to their corresponding piston engines. In a two-stroke engine like this, where gas exchange occurs every cycle, oil is injected into the burn mixture to lubricate the engine instead of separate journals. Rotary engines often have low torque ratings since the moment arm of a rotor is considerably less than the moment arm of a crankshaft on a piston engine. The seals between the rotor and the engine wall tend to deteriorate after time, especially in colder climates. To conclude, rotary engines both have their pros and cons over typical piston engines. While less complex, they typically require better care and frequent maintenance. While Wankel engines may not be the most efficient option, they are definitely the best choice for certain applications. Rotor on!